Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Module 4, Drivers of Reactions. This is video number 4. We're going to revisit our uh, brief look earlier at energy profile diagrams. So this one's going to give us a little bit more of an opportunity to examine energy profile diagrams in a bit more detail and to make sure that you can um, that you're familiar with these and you know what sort of information you can uh, take from them. So the most important thing about an energy profile diagram is it very often doesn't have a scale. It just has energy as a general variable on the y-axis and usually progress of reaction or time on the y uh, on the x-axis. So that means that as we progress over time, we see changes in what's happening to this uh, chemical reaction. So the first thing to note is that the, um, there's a certain energy level that corresponds to the energy of the reactants, often referred to as ER, energy of reactants. What happens to these is that, that we need to put a certain amount of energy in in order for them to rise to a certain value. This value is um, the peak of the energy hill and it has a certain value, which often isn't stated. And then we come down the other side, and depending on whether the uh, reaction is an endothermic one or an exothermic one, the, um, the graph will continue to uh, flow through. So if I continue the bottom of these ones, uh, this value that I'm going to come back to over here is actually the value of the energy for the products, EP. Now this value here, which is the energy max for this particular uh, reaction, allows us to calculate this very important concept known as the activation energy. So in order to calculate the activation energy, I just make sure that I look at where my energy of reactants is, and I look at the difference between the maximum energy and the energy of reactants. This is often referred to as the energy hill. It's the amount of energy that the reactants need to be given in order to uh, be raised to sufficient uh, energy for them to react, for the collisions to produce a chemical reaction. Otherwise, they won't react. Often at this point on the top here, we have something which we've called in the past an activated complex which is usually some sort of intermediate between the reactants and the products of a particular reaction. And of course, the other thing that's very important that we can get from this particular um, diagram is the difference between the, uh, whoops, just bring that down a little bit, bring that across. So where the energy of the reactants is, the difference between the uh, energy of the products and the energy of the reactants is equal to our delta H value, our change in enthalpy. So uh, this tells us something about the reaction in this case because the products, the energy of the products is less than the energy of the reactants, then energy must have been lost from the system. The delta H value uh, is going to be a negative value and therefore this is going to be an exothermic reaction. And that means that our uh, energy profile diagrams allow us to do a number of very important things uh, when we look at each of these different types of graphs. So here are two. The first one of these you can see is an endothermic reaction. It's an endothermic reaction because the um, products are actually at a higher energy of the products are at a higher level than the energy of the reactants. So therefore, we must have put energy in in order to raise the um, energy of the products to that final state. Notice this is a different concept to the actual activation energy, which is over here, um, which is the amount of energy, total energy, we needed to get all of the reactants to react, to get them up to the top of that energy hill. But once they had reacted, when we form the products, the products have a, an internal energy that is higher than those of the reactants, and therefore this is an endothermic reaction, okay? Energy 
is absorbed. And the delta H value is positive. For the one below, you can see what we've talked about before, the activation energy that's required, the energy of the reactants is now uh, larger than the energy of the products. The products is less, and therefore what's happened to go from here to here is that uh, we have a negative delta H value because energy is released. As a result, the first one is endothermic, the second one is exothermic, and this helps us to classify each of these different types of reactions on the basis of uh, the different energy profiles. So hopefully when you look at these graphs, you'll be able to draw a number of different conclusions based on the information that you can see. And if you have absolute values on these axes, then you're able to calculate directly what these values are going to be. Thanks for watching.